an exciting day this is. This, today is Sunday, August 12th, 2018, and I'm doing the Merry Mayhem Mystery. So I'm excited. I'm still finishing cutting out my fabric. I've done a lot of the fabric cutting without the camera. I'm sorry, but boy, has it been busy. And I always say that. I'm going to show you what it's like to do a mystery. And then at 3 p.m. today, we have our live feed. Remember, every Sunday, 3 p.m., I'll try to do a live feed. So, put your seat belts on and let's get ready for a fun Sunday. Okay, just to show you, this is my screen. This is Mary May, or Mary Mayhem, as she's known in, with her mystery quilts. She's online at Facebook, and let's see. Very nice lady. Well, good morning, everyone. Very talented designer. It's so designer. nice to have you join us again. So, you if you the, have uh, Facebook, I'm not me. on Facebook, uh, my but I'm still hoping to at least be able to we'll follow probably her. remain so for the foreseeable future. So, anyway, she's the one. She's the hostess for this mystery. She's the designer for this mystery. And she's done quite a few. And uh, I, as I said before, I tested a couple quilts for her and then found I'm really not a good quilt tester because I don't like the reading the fine details. I like winging it. And that's not what a tester needs to do. The tester needs to make sure that everything written down is exactly what's needed to make a quilt. So here is my cutting area and I've got most of it cut out. I am running behind. There are my instructions for cutting it out. Then I thought I would show you I've got my little IKEA cart over here holding stuff including a little bit of food so that as I get hungry I can eat something. Now I'm going to pan around the other way because I wanted to show you. I try to keep my room cleaned up while I'm talking to you but when I'm working on a quilt this is often how it looks an exploding fabric bin but I needed greens blues and purples and this is my bin a tote that care that holds most of those I've already looked in the closet to see what I had and this is great for those odd little pieces and this is proving to be quite a scrappy quilt so I am using them all here are I have baggies and I have them labeled so and then here the baggie I'm working on right now I actually have tape to the desk so that I can as I cut I can put them where they belong and over here, here's another one. And I keep them well labeled. Back to the cutting. I'm taking medium fabrics and cutting four three by five and a half inch triangles and four five and a half inch squares.
this fabric I consider one of the ugliest that Jenny Byer ever made but believe it or not it's going to look great in this quilt and it's going to give a much, much needed punch of color and sparkle. finished cutting out all of my mystery fabric so now I need to catch up I am a couple hours behind but I think that's just the way I've done almost every mystery in my life 
I keep promising one day I'm going to be ready to start right on time. So what I'm going to do is figure out how to do part one and then I will show it to you. I have figured out what Mary May wanted us to do. And what she wanted us to do is a fast and easy way to make flying geese blocks. Okay? So this part is going to be fun. So I've got all of my dark squares, my dark four inch squares, and all of my light six and a half inch squares. And if you want to see something that is truly amazing, watch this. Now, instead of, she wants you to draw lines, diagonal lines on the back of the squares. Instead of doing that, I take and fold my squares in half and press them very firmly and it leaves a wonderful crease. And I just did four at a time and that's a lot faster than drawing four lines. So now I take my large square and I place, and you put them right sides together And if you'll notice, you overlap these. So this is the way she has them overlapped. So we have the two squares right sides together with this background. I'm going to go ahead and pin them just so they don't move. And I pin them just so that they'll be stable, so I do a long pin. But I do them on the side where my I am, will not run over them. And I don't know if you can tell, but this is actually a very dark, great purple. And this is chartreuse. So I take them to the machine, and I stitch a quarter inch down each side of the pressed line. Now, you can take and use your rotary cutter to cut these apart, but I just take scissors and I come in and cut close to this seam line. I cut close to this and then come cut at an angle to meet the center. I do the same thing here. I, I cut like a little wedge. See the little wedge I cut out of it? What that does is removes the bunny ears at all at one time so I don't have to come back and cut again because at this stage I'm trying to be as efficient as possible so I can move through the process now so that you can see it I'll bring my iron over and press to the dark um, it would help if I moved the plastic bag. We don't need to iron plastic. Okay, so I bring it over and press to the dark. Which means if you have the dark on top, it pressing is very easy. Put the dark fabric on top and you just lift it up and press. Lift it up and press. Alright, so now do you see what we have? They're funny like little two color hearts. And what she wants you to do is take the, the other two that are that have been pressed in half so that they have a crease down the center. And with right sides together, place these right here on this the top part of this. Okay, so I make sure the edges are even. I pin it. Take this one. 
put the other right sides together even with that corner pin it and now I take these and stitch I'm going to chain piece these two just saves a little time without cutting the thread which takes time to start and stop so poor Mark he is upstairs with his shop back vacuuming up little sugar ants with all the rain that we've had lately here on the east coast sort of on the east coast um, We've had a terrible time with ants trying to come in because they're drowning outside. And I'm really sorry, but I'm not a big fan of ants. So he went out once again and sprayed the perimeter of the house with an ant killer or repellent. And I'm hoping this is going to do it because it's... I just, I hate ants in my kitchen. I hate ants climbing all over things, trying to get into my food. I just don't like it. They need to stay out. Okay. And this looks awfully odd, and you think, how is this going to work? It works beautifully. The first time I ever saw this was Eleanor Burns did it. And, you know, she's wonderful at finding ways for us to... Be more efficient because the less time you spend on things like this the more quilts you can make so now I will take and once again press these normally I don't press on my desk but this way you can see it all right so now as you see with just a couple steps you've got a flying geese and I think the thing I love most about this is that you're not wasting fabric. Normally when you make flying geese they want you to take and sew a square on and then you end up wasting a half of that square. But with this it is very efficient. So thank you Mary May. You did a beautiful job using this method for flying geese. Alright. So now that quickly I've got four brand new flying geese. So now I'm probably going to fast forward and get busy doing the rest of these.
All right, I've done a lot of sewing without you here, but I just wanted to sew last night, so I was up here till late. And um, but these are the this is what I'm working on right now. But let me go back just a bit and show you these wonderful sawtooth stars. And I really like them. Even that now, see with the right setting, that ugly fabric looks pretty cool. So here are my different stars and this is scrappy for me but it's a little controlled. I, I can't give up all the control. One time Alex Anderson talked about taking your fabrics, putting them in a brown paper bag, shaking the bag and whatever piece you draw out you must sew with another piece. I don't think so. <laughs> I can't do that. I can't give up that much control. She had a guest on was, who was talking about giving up that control. Uh-uh. Sorry. Can't do it. So. But. Now you remember that my fabric is everything from a dark, dark olive to a purple, a blue purple. So here I will go through. And I think this is all of my blocks. I had to make a bunch of the... Um, Canada geese, flying geese, pardon me, flying geese blocks. And so I think they came out pretty good. So now what I'm working on, so that I had to make, I believe it was 15 of these. And now I'm working on the companion block. And if you notice, they have the same layout. So when these come together, they'll make a secondary design. Isn't that cool? Look at that. So they're the same where you've got this size almost twice as big for this and then the small again. So these blocks have the same basic spacing so they can form. And so when these are sewn together it starts in here and then we'll continue to that one. So I like that. Alright so now I've got all my stars done. Now I'm doing I don't know what this block would be called. So I have made these two. And what I love is I did kind of a kaleidoscope design from the border print for these. And I think it's really awesome. Instead of just having more nondescript blocks, I think this helps pull in the border fabric and make it work. So what I was going to get ready and show you is earlier on I made a mess of these um, 15 times 4 so that's what 60 so I made 60 half square triangles and then I have these rectangles and then I've already put my kaleidoscope center in place with the rectangles on each end so now what I'm doing is I'm making a rectangle bordered by a half square triangle for this block. So I'm going to do that right now. And if you hear any other voices, my grandchildren are over and they're in the background. Hello! That's Evan. Charlotte, do you want to say hello? Oh, hi. Those are the dogs. <laughs> so your mom said whatever message you left was cute. Do you no, remember really what you bad. said? I'm really bad at phone messages. Uh, would you say something like, we want to come home at three or... Come rescue us! 
Please, they're gonna go make us garden. You know how we hate gardening. Now I'm taking and putting the half square triangles on top of the rectangle. Then I will press both of these and then add them to the block. So now I'm going to take and trim. I did not trim my half square triangles before I started this. This is a mystery quilt and I'm just kind of enjoying myself as I go. I'm not worried about all the little niceties. I'm just enjoying myself. So when I see they're too big in one way then I'll go ahead and trim them before I do the final cut. But these are nice, easy blocks to do, and I'm loving the results. Thank you, Miss Mary. Don't worry. It's only Grandpa making noise. <laughs> Not dying or anything. Now that I've got this pinned, and I'm pinning, and I wanted to show you something else. When I put this, the rectangles here, I press the seams away from the center. Press the seams away from the center. Now, for the little piece on the, the, the row on the top, I'm pressing towards the center. See where I'm pressing towards the center? This way I can nestle those seams in. And you can kind of feel when they're right up against each other. And I put a pin in. Make sure this is nestled right up against each other. Put a pin in. Now let's say that this center rectangle was just a little too long. All I have to do is put the side that's too big facing down under my needle. Then I get sewing. I raise up this fabric. I raise it a little bit if the bottom fat you always put the, the side with the excess fabric on the bottom. I raise it up a lot if I have a lot of fabric to ease in. If I just have a little bit to ease in, then I just raise it a little bit. And what that will do is you can ease in over a quarter inch of fabric, excess fabric, without any pleats or puckers. And then I just sew it. I'm going to back up just a second. I see that I got a little off, and I don't want to have to worry about that later. I'm trying to stay right here on my quarter of an inch. Alright, now I can lay this down and sew off. Now let me show you. Let's see how we did. We butted those seams up and we pinned. Let's see what we've got. Looks really good. This one is just a touch off. I need to decide. Do I worry about that or not? I think the answer is not. Because that's a nice looking beginning of a block. So I'm going to be a little bit more careful with this one since I know that mm, that. And also, before I pin it on, if I had just pinned this on, it would have been upside down. So always visualize it, then lay them right sides together. Then you butt these seams up again. I'll be a little more careful this time. And pen. Sometimes I pen double if I really don't want that seam to move. Because the more the more pinning through the fabric, the less that pen will twist on you. And so the, it, the seam will be a lot better. It will be a lot closer. Oh, okay. Now I'll go ahead and put it through twice because you just don't want this to be able to move at all. Ah, and I see. See where I've got a little excess fabric? This time it's on the kaleidoscope part. So I will put that side down because the feed dogs will help you ease that excess fabric in. I get sewing, and right now I'm fine on the end. So as I get to the middle section, I 
lift this up. See how I'm lifting it up? It's the same theory as running on a track. If you have the inside lane, you go a shorter distance. If you're in the outside lane, you have to go farther. So by lifting it up, I make the back fabric have to go just enough farther that I can ease in the excess. So it works really well. And let's see if this one did a little better. Much, much better. Let me press it and see then. Now, what do you think? And honestly, I can see the one that's off. It's right here. But I'm not really sure if that's worth worrying about. On to the next block. So I'm going to continue to do these. And then I will come back and show you the next step. Would you like to see what the grandkids have been working on? Grandkids, what? why don't you bring your project over and show the camera what you're doing. I just painted a, 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 there I you just go. painted this mask that I can put on my head. To just Are you thinking of using it for Halloween? Yeah. And what is your favorite video game? Minecraft. Minecraft. So is this a character yeah. from Minecraft? Alright, good job, Evan. Now let's see what Charlotte's been working on. Nana has lots of craft supplies in her studio and uh, oh my goodness for Halloween I'm going as positivity she's so going as positivity so I made this hat rainbows and nice lol on it and then I made this sign it says positivity oh it has diamonds hanging from oh it. I love that I love that very very pretty painting ah oh, peace sign peace love Charlotte, what's Positivity. your favorite video game? What's your favorite video game, Charlotte? Minecraft. Minecraft also. Oh, Charlotte. Yeah? You want to show them your lovely fingernails? Yeah. Charlotte's a teenager now, so... <laughs> I got purple fingernails. Very nice. Thank you, Miss Charlotte. That will do it for right now. And I'll see you back in a few minutes. Okay, I am working on this mystery quilt and I have all the blocks made. And now comes the tough part. How am I going to put them in order since it's a scrappy quilt? Could put them in that paper bag, but I already told you I don't work that way. I've got too many control issues. So I just thought I'd show you a few things and you'll understand why I can't just draw them out of a... Um, a paper bag because they're all different color combinations and I mean just just you wouldn't believe it so I want to kind of control what touches what so I had a great idea and and I didn't show you building all of these but I just want to tell you this is just a square of course this is your flying geese that's your flying geese unit this is a center square, flying goose. This is a flying goose, and then you've got your squares in the corner. So, pretty straightforward. This one was even more straightforward. You've got your half square triangles that we made early on, your rectangles, and the center block that I did a kaleidoscope effect. Rectangle here on either side of this, so you do this row, half square triangle, rectangle, half square triangle. That's all one row. Then you do rectangle, center square, rectangle. That's all one row. Then you put this row to this row. Then the bottom row is made as one row, half square triangle, rectangle, half square triangle. Now the one thing you have to make sure of is to turn your triangles in the right direction. When I was laying these blocks out, let me see if I can find it. I didn't even realize it until I laid the blocks out. And where it touched another block, it was quite obvious to me. So let's see. No, that's not it. It's here. But double check your blocks. 
because and when I laid these all out all of a sudden a mistake was very obvious see if you can figure it out whoops nope this one right up here it's turned around the other way so before I put it together I need to turn that block around but it's funny you get making these and you don't even see it until it bumped up against another block these blocks are wonderful because I love they make a couple secondary um, design combinations so I'm very very excited about putting these together I, I think it's going to make a striking quilt so now what I wanted to talk about this right now besides showing you the pretty blocks how do you figure out how to put these blocks together because I don't want two chartreuses together I don't want two purples together I don't want sometimes when I put blocks out when I finally look at it I realize I've put too many of one color in one section so, a couple years ago, I came up with this, and I think you'll like it as much as I do. And I've heard, I thought I invented this, but I heard that Bonnie <laughs> has been doing something similar to this for a long time. So, I'm going to relocate the camera and show you my trick. Because, you know... I don't like crawling around on the floor anymore. Never really did. And I don't have to anymore. So let me set the camera. With Mark's help, what I did is in the living room, I laid the blocks on the floor. Now, since it was 30 blocks, that was too many blocks to lay them all in one big giant quilt. So we divided them into two thirds and one third. And we laid them very close and square, laid them nicely on together on the floor. And then we took, Mark got up on a ladder, a little step stool, so he could lean to the middle and take a picture of the blocks we had laid out. We wanted them touching and nice and smooth. And he took a picture over top of them so that it, it wouldn't be skewed. You can't just stand on the floor and take a picture. You have to get right over top. Then I downloaded them on the camera and then I cropped everything that I could that wasn't block and then I printed them. This is cardstock. So I printed them on cardstock and then I used my paper cutter let me get my glasses on. I use my paper cutter and trim them up, cut them apart, like this. Now you can use scissors. Paper cutter to me just gets, it, it assures me of a straighter line. And so, this is my last cut, I do believe. Alright, so now, now that I have all of these, let me get this paper cutter out of the way. And I can take all of these blocks, and it's kind of like doing a puzzle. And that's why I like using the cardstock because they're heavy enough weight that they're not going to blow away, away if you breathe too heavy. And they're not going to curl up or lay wonky. But now I, what I really need to do is divide them into two types of blocks. So this type is, goes there. Then my stars, my sawtooth stars, go here. So it's just a matter of separating them into like piles. Now this one I noticed, I try very hard to print them out the same size, but not every one did. Where I had two, since I had two different photos, the one actually came out larger than the other. It was real hard to see. I'm sure there is a scientific way to make sure you've got them the same size. But I just cut them. Alright.
So put this here, this here, that. This one's also too big. Let me cut this. Okay. Put this here, this here, this, 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 this. Okay. So now I have two piles. Okay. Now. Let me trim this off here just a little bit. I don't want any of the rug to show from underneath because it'll affect how you see it. All right, so now I'm going to kind of spread them out a little bit so I can see most of them. Okay. All right. In fact, it might be good to put blues... And one, greens and another, yellows and yet another. So, there we go. That kind of gives me some color families to work with. And then I'll do the same here. So I have some purple, some blue purple. I need to trim this one up too. Okay, so I've got some purples and cut a little off of this. Okay, I've got blue, yellow, purples, green, blue, purple. Pardon me, I need to also cut some off of this one. The problem is, if you get the blocks t too different in size, then it is very hard to have the rows line up evenly. And you've got to really put them in there pretty good to make sure you've got it correct. All right. So we've got greens, greens, yellows purples and blues. Actually, this is mostly blue, so I'll put that up there with that. Actually, this one kind of is too. All right, so what I'm going to do first is let's start. I'm looking at the layout. I'll set it right here. Okay, and to start this, I'm going to start it with one of these and this is such a pretty one I'll start that and then let's pick something very different I don't know it might be too different how about one moment okay how about putting this one next Then, let's maybe put this one here. And... I don't know. But you see, you see how already it's tricky to figure out exactly where to put what. It's just all what is going to look good to the eye. That might be nice. And I think I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So six across. All right. So I need two more. How about a nice, well, that's blue there. How about a nice light colored purple? Okay, so put this next. Whoops, nope, not that. I'm sorry. Let's go up here and use a yellow. And then maybe this purple on the end. Alright. 
So now when I start the next row, I'll start out with a star. So let me put a nice light colored star there. Then I'll come up. Oh, what do I want down here? See, this is where it can get very tricky how to do this. Because I, I hate putting two purples beside each other. Uh, this might work. I don't know. And see it even, you know, and if you can take it, I recommend getting it in some kind of order. Take a picture, look at it through a camera because that can shrink it down so your eye doesn't get stuck on one thing. All right. Now... Let's try this one, maybe. I think that might be good. And then... Maybe that. <sighs> maybe that. And then, hmm. Let me see. Maybe this would go here. And then we'll come back down to the next row. Let's try maybe a nice purple and then oops, oops. Maybe this. So, do you see how we're going to see right away here, these two greens draw my eye. Don't like that there. Look at the beautiful secondary pattern that's coming up down through here. And it's drawing the stars together on diagonal rows. That's important to remember. Hmm. This is, you can see now, this is going to take a little bit of figuring out. But we'll get there. We will get there. And it looks like I am missing a couple of these. But that's good in a way because 
I didn't make them right away. I need two more of these square and a square, but that way I can choose what color I'm short on. But this is a little, this is how I put together a quilt with lots of blocks in it. And, uh, and, th and then you can just mix them all up, start all over again. And you know what? Mark is really good at this. He's got a great eye for color. So I think this is a perfect fun thing to do with him. So I hope that has given you an idea. Once I get these laid out just the way I want, I take a photo of them. Because trust me, they'll be scattered, they'll get messed up, whatever. So once you get them just the way you want, take a photo, print it out. You can print it out on a regular copy paper. Bring it down to your sewing table and, that, and then proceed to sew your blocks together using that as your pattern. So the next time I film, I will show you what I have put together and then I'll get it loaded and have fun quilting it. I'm back and I wanted to show you that today I took and did my layout and taped them to a piece of paper so that um, I had to tape them in place to keep them from moving so I thought well good then I could bring this right to my sewing machine. As I told you I was short two of these blocks. There's this space and then there's this space. So I thought I could use some blues there to kind of balance everything out. But it gave me a chance to try to put them in, mix up my greens and yellows and purples and blues. So I knew I had to make two more of them. And I started to cut out my strips of border. But I realized, I measured first, and I realized, oh my goodness, I'm not going to have, I'm just going to have enough to do a border. And sadly, since I cut the same amount out in the skinny strips, then that means by the time I put the first border and the second border, I was going to use that as a third border. I don't have enough. So first I tried taking all of my scraps and tried to like sew them together and think that maybe I could make those last because I had to make two more mitered blocks. To go in the center and then when I realized that and I knew they weren't gonna look good but in fact here's one of the pieces I started sewing together I was desperate but then I realized if I can't use the narrow border I could sew them together have them wide enough to do mitered centers so this is what I did and if you'll notice there's a little lavender on some of these because I had to use the selvages to get it wide enough and so some of the selvages showed. But there's one. You can see a little little marking of the selvage there. But I don't think people are going to pay attention to it. And then here is the second one. So I did two more blue ones. And I wrote, I wrote on here what I needed so that I would know right where to put them. Because here I said, okay, I, it's a little bit dark and intense here, so I said I need some with a light background. So, this one's going to go there. And then over here, I said, mm, I think I'd like a little darker background. I have some lighter backgrounds. So, I did mediums and darks for that one. So, anyway... And then I fixed the one. Remember, I had the one that I had turned the half square triangle around the wrong way. So I fixed that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the blocks as I have them in this order and just start sewing them together. Oh, one more thing. This is really important. My blocks figured out anywhere to be anywhere from 10 and 3 quarters to 10 and a quarter. And they were supposed to be 10 and a half. So what I did is I on the on the large ones I trim them down to ten and a half inches and I use my my shape cut ruler my slotted ruler and just laid it in and kind of and, and you just kind of you look at the you look at the block you line some of the lines the ruler lines up with 
the edges and seams in your block to make sure you get it squared because you don't want to get it wonky and then cut off the edges to make it the right size. So you kind of have to look and and measure and, and eyeball it to make sure, you know, and where it was too small, if a certain side was a little short, I put a safety pin. When I see that safety pin, I'll remember this is a little short, so be careful. You know, what I do is in the seam allowance, you have a quarter inch seam allowance, so on the side where this is a little short, I'll just kind of have a little less of it in the seam allowance to balance everything out. But as you can see, when you sew these together, your blocks need to be similar sizes so that you get straight rows. So now I'm just going to sew the blocks together and when I'm done I'll show you the finished product project and that'll be that for this mystery. I'll put it on the frame and uh, I'll probably make a separate video of because um, I have someone who asked me weeks ago could I please do a video of uh, the frame quilting. So I will now put these blocks together with my handy guide. Well, it is in the wee hours of the morning, but I was determined to get these blocks put together. So, and I think you're going to like the way it looks. I still have the border to put on, but as for this video, I'm done. So, are we ready? And I know you'll see more of this quilt later, I'm sure of it. Okay. Here it is. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this video of Mary Mayhem's Mystery Summer Mystery Quilt 2018 and I hope and I hope it has made you consider doing your own mystery because I tell you what you can learn an awful lot from doing a mystery and I sure did and I have something beautiful to show for it so be on the lookout and after I get the borders on I'll send you a little photo out there so you can see how the borders pulled it all together. Alright, thank you for joining me and until next time on Our Time to Quilt, have a great week. Bye-bye.